oor die hoe belangrijkheid in termen van die assessering. Dit gaan ook in daar oor om te kijken naar die belangrijkheid daarvan in termen van hoe moeilijk dit is om zo'n so specifieke um, afdeling te dek. En dan ook die focus in die eindexamen en hoe dit integreer in die ander. So I think that's quite an important thing for you to see that we really do already help you just by looking at the work schedule to see what will be covered. At the same time, the same question comes up repeatedly. Liesl, if you'll go down to um, the prelim exam part, please. It's just after cycle three. There we go. You're going to see the prelim exam already at the beginning of the year, if your child is with us, and no matter what grade they are in, we will already at the beginning of the year tell you right throughout until the end of the year what work needs to be covered, whether there's going to be a task, what type of task it's going to be, whether there's going to be a test or an exam, and what work will be covered in that test or exam. So it's not necessary to ask for demarcations, because just as for the end of grade 12, everything in the curriculum has to be covered. Here we've already broken it up and shown which work is in paper one, which is in paper two, how long the papers will be, what the totals are. So one knows already exactly, if you're joining now for grade 12, what to work towards for each of those exams. And in any other grade, exactly the same concept. It just would have had, for example, for cycle three, it would have had some work that they needed to cover, as well as then what would be in the, or what type of task to expect, or perhaps the topic of the task. Sometimes it just will tell you it's a practical simulation. And then lastly, um, to tell you what work will be covered in the test. So I think that covers a big section of the uncertainty about I'm moving across, how do I know whether it's the same work because I can see it on the work schedule? Do I have to use the same textbook? Not necessarily, because all the textbooks cover the South African curriculum, the CAPS. What is the difference between the IEB and CAPS? It is the type of questions mainly, and then a small bit of um, changes in terms of content, which will be indicated on your work schedules for you. How do I know how much time to spend? We've given you an indication in terms of the work, and you will be able to look at this and say, my child has already coped with this and is already covering this. So, Liesl, while we're at the same place, I'm going to ask you to just go back to the page itself. Because I think very important here, for example, if you click for us on something like cycle, um, let's click on cycle two. So, on cycle two, you're going to see where the download links are and where the upload links are. Now these download links only become available approximately one hour before a specific um, examination is due, or if it is a task, it becomes available a little bit earlier. So um, we always, with a download link, also have a reminder then that goes out via email. So you can't say, oh, I forgot about the exam because I forgot to look at the timetable on my personal zone because you would have had an email reminder telling you that this paper was, a, was now ready on the site and you will be able to access it and see it from that time on that day. So by clicking on the download link, Liesl, you can click on, for example, cycle two paper one download link for us. You will then see that as the paper is downloaded, it's on download so that we can file it have my ready going to be continue it's clicking to see it like upload links oh, Karen, you are breaking up badly um i think we're going to go over to some questions and we'll try again just now um let's quickly see um Colleen, are there any questions that you would like to answer so long really 
Right, I'm back. Okay, she's back. Okay. Okay. Let's go away. Me again. Okay, I think there's a bit of a hiccup there. These will continue. Um, thank you, Lisa. Welcome to everybody. Um, I see a lot of English questions. So I see Khada, there's a lots of lots of questions for you all about grade three, grade five, grade seven, and everything else that goes with that. So I will be nice to you and leave you a lot, but I'll I'll do a few myself as well. So let's look at a few of these questions, there are quite a few interesting ones. And it says here. Um, at the top, my boys are in primary school, grade three and grade five, Marley Bojo says, if they will be joining for the last two terms of the year, will, be, will they be credited for the past two terms and what will be required? Marley Bojo, I think we've got good news for you. What we do at those grades is we exempt them. In other words, term one and two does not really count at all and only grade uh, term three and onwards will count for them. I think you'll be happy for that. But what I would like to um, tell everybody is that we don't only give you term three and term four. We give you the entire year's work so that you can go back and you can revise. You can look at all of the support videos and Hada will tell you about grade three where we actually support the parent and not the learners because we feel that the parents really, need, really do need our support on those grades. In other words, please join us and you'll find that you will be able to complete the year successfully. Uh, Honse says, does this also include grade seven? Honse, I hope that you link up to Malibolge's um, question with regard to um, do the first two terms count? Um, no, it doesn't count. We completely exempt them from those and that is also true for grade seven. Tebojo asks, if I join end of June, beginning July, which term of cycle will we be starting with? Tebojo, you will start with the beginning of term three, and then you'll be able to revise back as much as you need. The good thing is that term four, or cycle four as we call it, is actually mostly for revision purposes, and I think that will work very well for you. Gerda, I'm going to leave Gonse's question for how often do the grade sevens have virtual classes? Uh, good afternoon, Gonse. Um, let me tell you more about the classes. We have classes for the grade sevens in the uh, languages and in maths. And then we also have pre-recorded classes for the, uh, in maths. The problem with the primary school learners is that they don't um, concentrate that well the whole time on an online lesson. So we do need the parents' assistance from the side when we do that. I also we, also, we usually ask the parents to sit nearby and see, because we can see the eyes um, wandering around and uh, doing all other stuff except from um, concentrating on the one who is presenting the class. So yes, we have um, maths, but it's not daily. It's a, we have about two classes, live classes per grade in maths um, currently, and then the pre-recorded classes that the learners can uh, um, they watch the, the, the video and then when they um, don't grasp an idea, they can pause, go back and, and um, pause as many times as they wish until they, they uh, get the concept. So for the other subjects, it's, subjects, it's rather, um, it's not so difficult. Um, if we see history and um, geography, if they battle with map work, then we get somebody to help them with map work, but there's not, there's not daily classes or a daily sh schedule that learners need to attend. All right, thank you, Khada. There are a lot of other interesting questions as well. Taran asks, are the options for both e-textbooks and hard copy? Taran, the good news is yes. You are able to decide which one works for you best. 
The only nice thing about e-textbooks is you can actually put it under your arm. It weighs very little and you can take it everywhere that you go. Some people do complain about getting headaches. Um, so be cautious about that. Be careful about that. The good part about that is if you are able to purchase a laptop or a desktop, which is very recent, then you're able to really search for one that does cater for the best vision possible. In other words, the, the screen does not move as much. The frequency of the screen is so high that you don't actually, your eye does not actually pick up any movement and therefore headaches and stuff like that is a thing of the past. However, some people still prefer paper books, which is awesome. If you would prefer paper books, you can select those, don't worry about it. The bad thing about the paper books is it's going to take a little longer to get to you because they've got to pack it and then send it off to you. So there will be a bit of a delay in that order. Sean asks, if both parents are full-time employed with the Brainline Solution work? Sean, I do get you. I was, um, I'm still a parent. My daughters are all grown and Rosie is my daughter. She's on this forum as well. She's one of the panelists. The fortunate thing about me working was that I was able to have my children with me and we actually worked together. So if it's possible for you to have your child with you and you are working at home, yes, it can work. You can make it work. However, it's not possible. And Gerda, I think, is a very good advocate of that. One can never replace a screen or one can never replace a body, a parent, a teacher with a screen. And that's what I feel very strongly about as well. One needs to be there. Even if your child is older, grade 10, 11, and 12, you might think that you can leave them all on their own. Yes, you can for the better part of the day. But your interest in your child is actually what is going to result in the success that you really want. So being involved, being interested, being active in the life of your academic, the academic life of your child is very important. So the short answer is, Sean, no, if you are away from your child and you are not at home, I don't think there's a way that you can make that work other than having a tutor full time. But from own experience, Sean, I can tell you what you will receive is secondhand information on the progress of your child. And having been jealous of the progress of my own children, I wanted to be there. I wanted to see what it was all about. I wanted to see that they're actually flourishing and that they are doing academically well. I think there was a question along the same lines. Um, Cindy, I think that was part of your question as well. If you're a full-time working parent, Cindy, if you're at home and you can have your children with you, remember school doesn't mean eight to one. School can be 12 to 5, school could be 5 to 8 in the evening. It depends on your lifestyle. But you have to be there and you have to be able to see to it that your child is progressing adequately. Martil Bucket has got an interesting question. Will the children be able to return to normal school in 2020? Martil, with confidence, as we are following the CAPS curriculum, what they do at school is what we do. We are just very adamant about the standards that we hold true to in uh, academically in our company. Mrs. Karen Reineke is the director of our assessment company, and she's quite strict about that. She would like to see to it that if a child goes back to a school, that they are adequately prepared and that the standards of the tasks and assignments that they do are even better than the ones that they would do at school. So absolutely, with confidence, you can take your child back to school and know that they've covered the curriculum completely and that they are fully prepared. Gerda, there is a nice one for you from the Engelbrecht family. Does grade R work the same as the other grades? I was just typing an answer, but I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll do a live answer then. Uh, no, grade R, R is a little bit different. That we don't have assessments for them. You get the lesson material and you have the whole year to work uh, through it on the learner space. So we don't have any assessments. We do have a, a school readiness program, um, um, school readiness test that you can um, have and then you can test the little one or it's always good to take them to an occupational therapist and make sure um, all the skills are 
um, up to standard to be doing well in grade one. So you you get the and there's no there's um, no online classes except for on a Monday morning when Liz will do some fun stuff with them, like um, uh, doing the weather, telling the news, drawing pictures. So and that's more than enough for a grade R learner. So that's a enjoyable Monday morning, and after that you can continue working on the modules that you will receive. Thank you, Hannah. Lots more interesting questions. Um, let's see. Mathilde asks, will you take the previous school report cards in consideration? Mathilde, yes, we do. If you have them on hand, we do. However, it is important that we do realize that from many schools, we are not able to get a first term report card. The only place or the only grade where that becomes an issue is where uh, is in grade 12 and I'm going to ask Karen if she can just elaborate on grade 12. So the short answer Mathilde is yes if we do receive the report card for term one we assimilate that into the academic um, report for the year. If we don't we exempt the learner. Karen for grade 12 what do we do? I think the important thing to remember is that grade 12 and, and the assessments for grade 12, um, as for the other years, but then very specifically in grade 12, are actually governed by law. In other words, in a normal year, and this is an abnormal year because we still have COVID added to it, there is a law which says exactly which assessments have to be completed by the students. So we know that we have to have a full portfolio for the students. And then very importantly, we also know that if students are coming to us from perhaps um, a departmental school, a state school, not an IB school, they would have had different types of assessments. So what we do is we collect these assessments. In other words, we ask you as parents um, and the students to get as many of those assessments from their schools, whether the schools pack them for you or whether they then scan them and send them to us. What we then also do is we, from our side, then also try to approach the schools if you have problems with them, but the entry point would be from yourselves. And then we look at the whole package of assessments and say, right, we couldn't take somebody now who enrolled today because tomorrow they are writing the geography MacBook paper already or whatever it might be, and we can't just expect them to write. So we do exempt them completely. And I saw there was a question about the exemption for grade nine as well. We exempt them from writing these assessments now. So for the junior grades, going right in up to grade 11, we will exempt completely. They don't have to catch up, if I can use that term, any of the assessments. For grade 12, however, we do have to catch up on those assessments because a student or a learner then, we like to call them students because we have many of them who are old already as well. Um, a student who is going to write grade 12s needs the full set of all the tests and tasks as prescribed by the curriculum, which is the law. We will then, because these students are joining us late, assist in getting from the school and what is missing in action. That we will assist with to catch up and we have until around about mid um, October, October, depending on what assessments they are, and depending on the subjects that those assessments are missing for, to help the students to write alternative assessments, which we will then be responsible for. Um, I did get a query from somebody the other day who said, good, if you're going to have these alternative assessments for my child, how much am I going to pay additionally for them? And here's the good part, nothing, because you are paying us for a full year's set of assessments, even if Rosie, as our financial manager, is giving you a discount for joining later in the year. We know that you have not had the, um, the full benefit of attending all the classes live, et cetera, et cetera. So, and we do give you, you see, as Liesl showed you just now, you have access if you join now to everything that was loaded for the whole year. So you will have the videos, everything. And using those videos as your background, we will then be able to guide you. We won't have catch-up classes, but the videos and watching them will be like catch-up classes so that you can then write these assessments and catch up the full portfolio. But we don't expect you to come to us with it full. We will help you to build it up as time um, continues. I see there was a question as well about the difference between the full and the express packages. 
And I think that is also something that's very important to see. When one looks at it, and I'll ask Khada to explain a bit more about it in the junior school, but when we're looking at grade eight and upwards to grade 11, there is no express option for grade 12. The express option is nearly like a DIY. It means that when you're looking at by law, you're allowed to homeschool, but you have to ensure that the assessments which your child do are set by um, qualified teachers and are actually marked by qualified teachers to ensure that you can get that report that Colleen spoke about earlier about you returning to a school. And that is exactly where the assessment aspects part of Brainline comes into this, that we ensure that everybody who sets our papers, marks our papers is qualified so that you can get that assurance so that it's not your interpretation of what you thought was needed, but that it is really the standard which would be required of your child at that stage. And therefore, when one looks at the express package, you still need that. Even if you decide you didn't want your, class, your child to attend our classes, you wanted a cheaper option. So in the express option, we basically give you a work schedule. It looks similar to what Liesl showed you just now, excepting that that was grade 12. We give you the work schedule, and then you buying the assessments from us, as well as the memorandums, or as we like to call them, the marking guidelines. So you will take that assessment package and you will let your child do the work according to our schedules and then let them assess when you feel they are now ready for the next sec the section. You will not have any contact with our teachers. You will not have any contact with my assessment department people. It'll all be done by you as the parent as and when you feel ready. It's important to note that that does not include a grade whatever year-end exam report. In other words, that will be there to satisfy, firstly, your child's um, need to study a curriculum which is accredited, to satisfy the need by law that you as homeschooling parent are ensuring that the assessment is on standard, but it does not give you a final year-end report. To get the final year-end report, you would therefore have to enroll additionally for the year-end exams. We have a, a product called Report to Go, which means that you have done either your own work or you have done what Brainline has, has led you with with Express, and you are now ready to let your child write a final year-end exam and get a valid report. That will then be marked by us. So what is the gain? The gain of doing Express is by finishing the curriculum at your leisure in your time frame. Having assessments which are valid and a marking guideline that you can use to mark the papers as necessary. What is the loss? You do not have access to any of our videos, our video classes, our teachers, any of the support any additional past papers, any revision classes we might have, any additional notes we might have. You will be buying your textbook as your content, using the internet, et cetera, which we would also do, but with no additional guidance from ourselves. Hope that, that puts that all into um, perspective. I think, Hada, would you like to mention anything about the difference in terms of express and the full packages in terms of the junior school? It's basically the same. Um, you get the, pack, the, the express package at the beginning of the year. You do the assessment, the marking and everything, and then it's uploaded onto your brain online as well. We upload, you upload the assessment as well as the mark, and then we, um, uh, you, that, that, that gives you an SBA. Then you write the, uh, our year-end exam with the rest of the brainline learners. And then if there's a different, we, it needs to be moderated in the way in, in which we moderate, if there's a 10% difference between the SBA and the year-end mark, we um, don't use the SBA then, and only the year-end mark counts. So, but it's not a zero, 
it's just all where the year, uh, where the SPA would have been 60% and the year end mark 40%. Um, all the the, if the the end year exam counts 100%. So it's not used. It, it's it's not that the learner would get a 30 out of 40 and then um, has to redo a grade or anything like that. It's only about having a moderation process because uh, we use um, teachers that's in schools and used to marking and standards and that's our uh, process of doing the moderation. So it's basically the same as in high school. Lots of questions, lots of answers. I've picked a few sweet ones for myself, Liesl. Can I continue with those? Yeah, you can continue. Thank you, Liesl. Awesome. All right, let's see. Um, let's start at the top. I, I picked so many questions that I lose complete track. So I would like to start at the top. Taryn Davies says, on that note about English, my biggest question is around the Afrikaans. I hear that brainline class teachers switch a lot between English and Afrikaans languages. Our three children are all English. So Afrikaans would be a second language and they would only want to have Afrikaans spoken in the Afrikaans class itself. They would really struggle with lessons if they were in Afrikaans and not in pure English. Taryn, yes it is. We do offer our classes bilingually. And Taryn, we consider that to be an advantage and I hope I can convince you of that advantage because we find that our Afrikaans students sometimes battle with English and our English students mostly battle with Afrikaans and in grade 12 and um, when you finish with your grade 12 year you have to offer two languages both a home language and a first additional language however having said that we do realize that some subjects have a lot of terminology and they are heavy in terminology and those subjects would be for instance mathematics that would be accounting and for those sub subjects we offer Net in Afrikaans die vak wiskunde of net in Afrikaans die vak rekeningkunde, want ons weet the, termino the terminology, oh my goodness, big word, the terminology in those subjects are quite um, dense and they need to know exactly what the questions are about and it's no use for them to not be able to understand the questions and it's no use for them not to know exactly how to answer the questions. So for terminology dichte vakke, bied ons dit cyber in Afrikaans aan, or purely in English. But for the other subjects, where the terminology is not an issue, we offer it bilingually. I hope that helps, Taryn. All right, it says, please explain the process to follow to register or enroll to grade 11 child. And that's from W Price. That's so easy, I'm glad to say, you just go to brainline.com and you click on enroll with us new clients. And there we ask of you a few things specifically for grade 12. We please ask you to upload your grade 10 report card. And please remember that the subjects on your grade 10 report card should be the same that you choose for grade 11. If you've got a term one report, wonderful. We would love to have that as well. Then we can work it into your final report at the end of the year if you don't. Don't worry about it. We can exempt you for most of the assessment from term one and term two, but the teachers will be in contact with you for those assessments who are, that are compulsory, such as pets and pets. And I think if I remember correctly, Con quickly touched on those. Um, if she didn't, she, I'm sure she will um, tell you about which sections of grade 10 and 11 are the compulsory ones that we cannot exempt you from. For Clinton asks, grade one, how interactive is it? And Clinton, the reason why I picked your question is, what is nodig van die ouders? Hoeveel tyd het die kind nodig per dag? Dit sluit aan by die vorige antwoord wat ek gesê het. En vir graad 1, 2, 3, Clinton, en ek dink as ek nou gaan praat, gaan Gerda so haar kop op, op en af, <laughs> nee, nie die kant toe, nie Gerda die kant toe, so met my stem om te sê, weet jy, Clinton, dit is die lekkerste. En net boek uit my kop sien ek Liesel sy, Fotokie is een prentjie, sy is een nieuwe mama met die prachtigste, prachtigste ousienkie wat so rikkie terug begin loop het en sy sal vir jou sê, elke oomlik is precious, elke oomlik is kostbaar en daar specifiek vir my graad 1, 2, 3 was het so lekker om te sien 
hoe leer my kind skryf, hoe leer my kind lees, en dit is een uh, verantwoordelijkheid wat nie baie graag wil afgeen nie, en dit was een heerlijke voorrecht wat ek gehad het om saam met my kinders te beleef, as jy tutor aanstel om jou te help dan my, het ek daarvan gehou dat die tutor hier by my is, hier na by my is, so dat daar die persoon um, saam met my, my kinders kon beleef en hulle kon help, omdat ek gewerk het waar ek nie kon nie, maar die interactiviteit kom van die ouwerse kant af en nie van hierdie oudooie skerm wat voor ons sit op die oomlik, soos wat het hier is nie. Wat lekker is, as jy betrokken is, dan sien jy onmiddellik waar sikkel jou kind en waar moet jy help en kan jy daar warmte bijvoeg. Rus en Marie sê vir ons, ons moet asjeblief van julle noem, van ons be active vir ons breinlijn kinderkies, graad 1, 2, 3, 4 tot 7, ach julle moet kom kyk hoe lekker oefen hulle sal. Dit is een heerlijkheid, en julle moet saam met ons kom oefen, dit is te prachtig en dit is te wonderlik, en kyk nou net as jy dit mis, dan mis jy groot deel van hulle leven. Goed, kom ons kyk jy vader. Rita says, if understood correctly previously, the e-books are printable and the reason I picked that one is also because she spoke about grade 1 printing and it's a lot of printing to be done. Rita, ek is vreselik seinig met papier. I'm really stingy when it comes to paper. So I only print the ones that I really, really want. Such as the worksheets that they have to physically fill in with their little hands. Um, those are the ones that are printed. The instructions to the parents, I didn't print. If you are pedantic about that, you're welcome to do that and build your own file and keep that on hand. If somebody comes, to, um, comes along and says, but how did you do the assessment? Did you do formative assessment? Did you do summative assessment? What kind of curriculum did you follow? What are the skills that you taught your children? Then you've got this big fat file that you can show them. So that's always good to have. But if you are satisfied with the digital format, um, like I was, then, and if you're stingy with printing, you only selectively print. You don't start at the top and finish right at the bottom. You only print that what you need. All right, let's see for the rest of the questions. Lizzie, we asked, um, will the, the child be able to go back to a school in 2021? And I think I touched on that previously to say absolutely with confidence. But I would like to just quickly identify the question about CAPS and IEB, which also links up to that, where um, somebody asked me, but if they did CAPS, can they then go back to an IEB school? Yes, absolutely. That's why we call our grade 8, 9, 10 and 11 IEB aligned, because even though it is the CAPS curriculum as prescribed by the Department of Education, we align it towards the IEB exams at the end of grade 12. So we encourage insight, we encourage application of knowledge, we encourage critical thinking and all of those wonderful things that we feel is needed. We also add to the curriculum the stuff that the IEB says should be because that prepares the child for tertiary education. So we're all happy about that. If you want to go back to an IB school, you can do so with great confidence. I think that is enough of blabber from my side. Apart from one, I quickly want to, before I go, Liesel, Tarina Davis asks, is the Cambridge or Oxford curriculum not better, especially for high school? Tarima, no, not at all. And I think the reason why you asked that, there's a rumor in the hallways that the South African National Senior Certificate is not accepted abroad. Tarina, just Google and see. There are universities, not there are, many universities not only mentions the National Senior Certificate as being accepted, but also invites South African learners specifically to apply to their university to study there. So no, absolutely not. National Senior Certificate as it stands is widely accepted abroad and our South African children are welcomed abroad. Please be careful though. If you have 30s and 40s on your national senior certificate, it will not be looked upon very nicely. You have to apply with proper grades, 70s, 80s and 90s. So it's an absolute fallacy and it's an illusion and hogwash. I don't know if there's a better description other than that, that our national senior certificate is not accepted abroad. It is widely accepted. And I would like to encourage you to Google the university that you intend to go to abroad and see whether they accept the national senior certificate. 
All right, so that was a lot of rambling from me, Liesl, back to you. Okay, thank you, Kadeem. Thanks, Kadeem. Um, Karen, I see that there were one or two questions that you also marked for answering. And then Gerda has quite a few that she wants to answer. So Karen, perhaps you can do yours and then we can go back to Gerda. Okay, I think um, the ones that I want to look at are mostly around the curriculum part as well as then the combination with the examinations and the invigilation. Um, as Zizel showed you earlier on, um, there is the download and the upload link. So because we're working in an environment with distance education right up to including grade 12, round right about mid-year, um, sometimes a bit further on after mid-year with grade 12, but with everything including the year-end exams, you would as parents be responsible to ensure that your child is writing these exams um, under examination conditions and that um, that which the IB stands for which we as Brainline stand for, is being complied with. And that is that the assessments are valid and that they are reliable. It is very important that the assessing is valid. When we look at the valid assessing, it means that if you have the same assessing tomorrow or overmorgen under the same conditions, so, um, laat afneem, gaan ek die selfde uitsla kry? Wat ek die same assessment and under um, the same conditions tomorrow sat down and had the student write this paper, would they be able to achieve the same mark? In other words, the questions must be set in such a manner that they have the same outcome, but it also means that the students have to comply with um, the requirements which be, would be examination conditions. So how on earth do we ensure this? How do I stand up as the Director of Assessment Aspects, the Division of Brainline Holdings, which is responsible for all assessments, and how do I look at an examination body like the IB and say, please accept our SBA marks as being true, valid, and reliable. If I have no idea about under the conditions under which those exams were written. As a parent, I'm sure that you would want your child to write the, the paper for the same length of time that anyone else writes the paper. At the same way, you as a parent would want your child to write the exam under the same examination conditions, whether they're at a school or at home. And that is when independent invigilator comes into play. Now in the junior school, Hada will tell you that we also like invigilators, but that it is slightly more flexible there in terms of parent doing, parents doing the invigilating. And us not always um, in absolutely insisting on having um, external invigilators. But in the high school, it becomes more and more important to be able to prove to the IEB that our conditions and those at a school are leading to the same outcome. That a student is not being advantaged unfairly because they are doing our form of the IEB instead of a school's with bricks form of, the, of that. And that is why we do ask for independent invigilators. So under normal circumstances, it would be like asking a neighbor, it would be like asking perhaps the neighbor's children who are studying at university, et cetera, to invigilate while the exams are um, continuing. Liesl did mention to you that under assessment vault, um, perhaps you can go through to that part at the moment quickly for me, Liesl, that if we go to the assessment vault, we actually show you what is required and we have information regarding the invigilation. So there is a process, it's not difficult, it's easy to follow, the click links that you follow, and then you get a manual which tells you what is and what is not allowable during invigilation, as well as during an exam, as well as then um, a questionnaire, it's like a multiple choice test which has to be written and completed then by anybody who wants to invigilate, so that we know that indeed, they are um, complying with everything that is required. So there Liesl is now. She's gone to the Afrikaans one for a change for us, which is great. The assessing is close. And the first three clickable links, she won't click on them for us now, but she'll just show you step one, step two, and three is to actually get this invigilator then registered. Now, we do understand with COVID that this is one of the reasons 
um, why many people are now considering distance education or online schooling, homeschooling, whatever you would like to call it in your specific case. And we do know that half of the problem is that one isn't necessarily able to have independent people into your home and feel safe about this. So for COVID, we've made special, or the COVID situation in the country, we've made special allowances. And we have adjusted, and you'll see on the same page, right down at the bottom, it says ASSA, that's Assessment Aspects, um, Assessment Guide, the Assessierungskits, which shows you exactly with pictures how to do all of this, how to download, where to find the password, how to put the password in. So there's, there's never anything left in doubt about how do I do this? It's actually all there in a guide with step-by-step -step pictures. And then at the same time, there is also, now we're on a junior school, it says the grade four to seven, Algemeene Frau, the FAQs. Now this is different for the different grades because obviously the requirements are going to be different. So depending on what grade you're on, you're gonna have the right FAQs on your child's page. You'll never have to wonder are they right because your kid can only see the right ones. And they will explain to you the differences we have. So in the high school, and in the school, and this is what it now for us so important is, you can with Gerda communicate with you by us, and you can know that you will be able to do it. I will be able to do it with my kind, as you have done the formal assessment. Whereas with the um, high school, very important with this, if you are the parent, it's exceptional that we're allowing parents to do this now only because of COVID in the high school. In the junior school, it's not as critical to be external. So yeah, we would have been a whole process. The process is terribly easy. The parent enrolls, does this uh, um, set of, of going through the questions, writing the test. And then what you need is absolutely no more than what we're doing here today. You can register a free Zoom account, Absolute gratis om by Zoom a rekening te registreer. Alle laptops het a webcam on hulle, or laptops have got a webcam on them. Of alternatiefelik, as mens a staanrekenaar het, dan kan a mens a webcam bykry, hulle is baie goedkoop. En dan gaan a mens typies op Zoom in gaan. You'll go onto Zoom, you'll place your um, computer slightly different to where mine is. You can see you're seeing only my shoulders. Liesl, you're seeing slightly more. You can see a chair behind her. So you would have this um, computer placed slightly further away. The student would be writing. And then there are certain protocols which we bring in with what we require to be able to prove that you were present during this whole session. Obviously, you can't get up and walk out got to be present and then we have a whole lot of protocols to follow along with that. So for this year, not a problem whatsoever, depending on how things change for next year and so on. We're also looking at the alternatives of having other online, they're normally called proctors. The word proctoring comes from um, the American version and the overseas, even in England, they use proctoring. Proctor to proctor is to invigilate. It's exactly the same. If I'm a proctor, I'm an invigilator. And then to look at online proctoring so that instead of having a human being in your room, you would then be doing this via Zoom. We're also going to be investigating this further for our prelims this year. So most definitely, yes, we do need um, the invigilators. I think then also what is very important here is for us to look at um, the the questions about how am I going to cope for the exam? So I think we've done the past part of getting an invigilator. And then the next part is, okay, if I am now going to enroll my child, how are they going to be ready? I have to remember that the year end exams cover the year's work. So for the year end exam, I my kind gereed wees om alles van die jaar te doen. So as my kind now in a ander school was, dan gaan ek die werkskedele gebruik. I'm going to use the work schedule. And I'm going to tick which work we've already covered. Fortunately, if I've enrolled for the full package, I'm going to have all the prior exams and things that Brainline shows me. We give you at least one extra year. Plus then this year's ones which have already passed, which you will be able to access because you will get the passwords. So you can download those question papers. You can use those question papers to see whether your child is actually okay. I might say, good, we've done all of this maths and I think my child's okay. Then they write a, a, a brain line paper and I say, oh, thunder, they're not quite as okay as I thought. We need to catch up on some of the work. Alternatively, you might have done some of the work which we're going to do in cycle three. We're quite good at following the law. 
whereas not all schools are equally good at following the law. They like to swap the curriculum around and do their own thing. And we've to, I've been really distressed to find that a lot of schools, um, or not a lot, but a number of schools, have actually skipped the grade 11 work and are letting their grade 11s do grade 12 work. And by law, the National Senior Certificate, the National Senior Certificate, is a three-year qualification. It's not just a year. At the end of grade 12, is the final exam of three years of work. It's the final exam of three years' work. So by law, one may not skip grade 10 or grade 11 and just jump into grade 12. You have to have done all the work. And there are definitely schools, and unfortunately, some of the top schools that I'm getting um, information from parents from where their children are struggling because they are just skipping all the work that is necessary in grade 11 and just doing, redoing sort of grade 12 twice. Um, that might not catch up with them in grade 12, but that's the type of thing that's going to catch up again in grade, in, in university environment, when you've just left topics out completely. So most definitely, if your child joins us now, there is adequate time between now and when their exams start at the end of October to be able to catch up and to complete a year. I have no doubt about it. That is definitely um, doenbaar that iemand dan in a law school umgeving, in a work school umgeving selfs, dan die werk kan in hal en aan die einde van die jaar successful die jaar kan voldoe. Dis echter net moendlik in dien die persoon baie seker maak dat die kind die werk hersien. If you were to join us now, I would join as soon as possible so that you get access to all of this. And there I see Liesl as the mentor nodding. She's the remedial teacher, mentor, everything for a school. And she will immediately say to you, as her head says, that the sooner you have available what needs to be caught up, the better. So we have a recess starting um, on Monday. Monday, our students have finished. Tomorrow's the last exams. So... This is an ideal time to start so that you can gradually get into it and start looking at what needs to be covered for the end of the year. At the same time, I see Honsi is asking about the clarity on the assessments and how they are done. Are they online or are they digital? Liesl, can I ask you to, in the background, get a password for any paper. Let's say I know they wrote grade eight and nine life sciences today. The life sciences papers are always pretty because they've always got pretty pictures and, and insects and things in them. So won't you please, for either grade eight or grade nine, will you please get the one like that for us so that you're ready so that we can perhaps then do a download and show parents how these are actually done. Um, then Rieta said, my question wasn't that clear. For the full package not expressed, are there videos and classes? And if not, might we well do express and the report to go for the end of year. Uh, Rita, I think here yeah, we've got to split into junior and high school. If it's high school for the full package, then we go back to, and we, Liesl can show us the um, timetable once we've done an example of an assessment. And I'll discuss the, the classes with you. In the junior school, there are not classes every day. The classes are, as Gerda said, for some of the subjects and from time to time. And there are uploaded videos. But the uploaded videos target those areas which need explanation. A lot of the junior school work is work which I as parent would be able to explain to my child. And therefore, it wouldn't necessarily need a teacher to sit in in the class. But when it starts getting to languages and to maths, some of that work becomes so that I often look at, um, or see parents even on Facebook saying, I don't know how to explain this fraction to my junior school child. And that's not because the parent can't do it, but it's because it's sort of different to suddenly have to do explain how to do it. We can do it, but can we as parents explain it? And that is where Gerda's team then will have videos for you explaining those difficult sections. On Express, there is no additional help. It's literally a takeaway. It's like moving through the Express lane at Kentucky. You don't, don't get to pick the pieces that you want. If you wanted only drumsticks, and thighs you couldn't even tell them you got whatever they put in the package 
although it's still going to be high quality, but it means that you as parent want to have a bigger role to play and not rely as much on us and our assistance throughout. I think that answers that one, please. Um, then, um, Clinton Waldek vraag, hoeveel ure a dag sal a kind besig wees? Ek denk, hierdie kom weer terug na baie wat Colleen vir julle gesê het. Um, ek gaan as om die woordskool vraag, so dis in die antwoord, maar daar is ons eerst by Liesel sê, dis wonderlik, so kom ons kyk gaf as soon toe. En um, daar het Liesel nou vir ons een vraagstel oopgemaak. So toe Liesel om afgelaai het, het hy oopgemaak en hy het net gesê, sy het een vraagstel afgelaai en daar was so'n blokkie opgewees, wat gesê het, die wachtwoord is nodig. So when she downloaded it, the paper couldn't open. It was waiting for the password, and the password is released 15 minutes before the exam session starts. Now it's got one massive document which we give you. So we ensure that you will never worry about saying, oh, I wonder if I downloaded a map, or I wonder if I downloaded an answer book. So Liesl can scroll through this one for us. It tells us who the examiner was, who the moderator was, and it tells us that there are three question papers and that we have to work on the answer book. And there we go through, and at this stage, it's told us to work on the answer book. So this is purely the question paper. That's the quality of what our question papers look like, nice and clear diagrams. If we need the students to use them, you can just continue scrolling for me, Liesl, until we get down then to the end and we move to the answer book. So this is then a great eight life sciences exam. Can you quickly stop for me right there while I saw something? Go up to the previous one with a graph. Perfect. This is such a nice example of what the difference is between the IAB and CAPS. It's the same work that was covered. But this type of question here, where there's interpretation, where there's understanding, is typically what I expect the, the IAB examiners to set for me. So perhaps if this was um, in a state school, the question would merely have said, um, in what seasons do hedgehogs hibernate? And your child would have learned that hedgehogs hibernate in winter. And you'd never go further on in it. But now look at where it comes in. And this is what turns this into an IB. 232. Give information from the graph to explain your answer. That is what made it an IB question paper. The fact that a student had to look at this, see that what was on the vertical axis was the body temperature, see that we had the hours of the day on the horizontal axis, and then say, my goodness, look at what the body temperatures are doing and what happens during hibernation and how does this really work? And then like a question like two, three, four, what is the lowest recorded temperature of a hedgehog according to the graph above? In other words, it's something that the children have to understand how to use a graph and not just two, three, five, what is hibernation? But of course, that comes into it as well. Thanks, Liesl. I think the next one's also a lovely example of what happens. There we have, just stop for us quickly. Um, if you look at that, the variegated leaf, but now do we expect a child to know what a variegated leaf is? This is a great word. Verwag ek nou dat my kind, en miskien het ek a, a, a huistal Afrikaans, maar ek wil hier my kind moet in Engels school gaan, omdat meeste tertiare handboeken en bronnen op die internet eindelijk in Engels is. So weet my kind wat um, variegated beteken? En daar sit ons vir hulle prentje in. So dat ons nie verwacht dat hulle die Engelse taal hulle moet um, omslaan nie, dit moet die concepte wees. So daar gaan hy nou, sê vir ons goed, daar is ons vir ons een blaar, en dan kom ons weer na toepassingsdele, waar ons sê goed, en nou het ons om in die sonlig gesit, en ons het gekyk of daar dan stuisel vir een woordig was. En soos Liesel afgaan, sal jylle sien, ons geef hulle duidelike prentjes om te wees wat gebeur, lekker IB type vraag, ons wees proefbysies verstaan, begrip, en natuurlijk beteken dit, ek gaan vir my daar stop Liesel, Natuurlijk betekent dit, als ik een onderwijzer is, en ik weet, dit is die assesserings, dan weet ik en ik pas mijn onderrug daarbij aan, en dit is ook om die volle product, soveel 
um, waarde het wat jy nie in express gaan kry nie. Want in express gaan jy volgens een handboek las gee, maar jy gaan nie noodwendig hierdie type goed so duidelik bespreek nie. Terwyl ons levenswetenskappe onderwijzer gaan in al sy lesse die hele tyd bezig wees om met grafieke te werk, concepte wat hy wil oordra in grafiese vorm en visual oor te dra. And this, that's what I was saying in Afrikaans that is why our lessons are so focused in terms of explaining the concepts. And that is the big difference between pure CAPS and CAPS as used and adapted to the IEB environment. And we are proudly IEB. There is one other online um, environment, but they're tiny. They don't have many subjects. Um, let's use the tiny for the many subjects, meaning, the, meaning what I was saying, but I don't have all our subjects, which does IEB. None of the others are with the IB. Now, there you'll see it's the same document, and here comes the exam um, answer book. So, here, Liesl, it will scroll through for you the first bit. You'll see that there's the parts that have to be completed. It said, take note, this is formal. You need your invigilator. It tells you how to scan, what to do. Just a reminder of what you already know. And then, very important, here's the declaration of authenticity. The IB expects that every time a student submits anything, they say, I promise. I did the work and I didn't plagiarize. So we go through that and at the bottom, very important, here's where it comes in, that there was an invigilator that was present the whole time. And then just after that, this specific one did have a little bit of, a, of little blocks to fill in A, B, C, D at the top of the next page. And then after that, Liesl, you can scroll a bit more. There we go. And then after that, we have lined pages. Why do we let children write? Why don't we just do it all online, tick cross? And I think this is where Gerda and Liesl will both jump up and down and tell you in the junior school what it means if a child doesn't learn to pick up a pencil and write. And how many things are going on in their brains. And it's not just about having a beautiful writing. It's about so many concepts in, in their development, which they miss if they don't write. I know there's a whole debate about should there even be cursive writing? And when you look at what cursive writing does in your brain, you actually want to say, how can there not be cursive writing? Um, now, the same here, but the children can write in their own manner in the high school, but no, it will be done this way and then it will be um, the, scanned afterwards. They get to the bottom of this, they print out this, they scan it, and they upload it. We do have special conditions now for COVID where there might be a shortage of ink due to finances, et cetera, but that we discuss with the parents that are um, that need this. So I think, Hunsi, I've answered your question very um, extensively, the difference between CAPS and IB. I think a child who comes to Brainline and goes back to um, a CAPS school will only excel and never the other way around. It does take a little bit of time for them to adapt to us. Um, I can proudly say that we have a student from one of the top Afrikaans schools in the Pretoria area who has actually joined Brainline in grade 11. Um, and he takes sort of what would be traditionally known as one of the most difficult subject combinations. And he has actually said to one of our teachers that his only regret is only joining us now and not having known the difference prior to this because of this concept um, type teaching that we do. Um, how do we handle the rest of the current school term for the current school if we join now, exams, etc.? All you would need to do is to join us to find out what you need to catch up on and to work up towards being able to cope with the cycle three that we have assessments, and then towards our final year-end assessments. So in other words, you would break away from the school that you're in if you don't have a, a report from them, then we will exempt from those and we will use cycle three and whatever is necessary to catch up so that we do have some of the other assessments so that you know what to build up to. And then, as I did mention, the detailed way of catching up in grade 12. So most definitely, you would join us, not stress about the immediate assessments, but you would have access to the past so that you can cover the curriculum and self-assess. I think that part, I think, is sorted. Um, Liesl, was there anything else? I know there was one thing about the tutor centres available. Um, Colleen did mention to you about the Cambridge-Oxford. 
Um, to give you a very good idea, if you, if you look at our papers and you go and look at Cambridge papers, if you had any access to them, and you can find some of them, download them. Um, you can look for life sciences, but they call it more biology. Download them and put in IGCSE as the level, because that is approximately equivalent to grade 10 in South Africa. Um, put that in and look, and you're going to see it looks very much like this type of paper. So you are preparing your child in the IB environment on the same level as preparing them in a Cambridge environment. The only difference is that in terms of university entrances, I would, if it was my child, do IB three times before I would do um, Cambridge for the mere sake that the choice of subjects and the level of subjects, which is um, accepted at university, in terms of the IB and the number of AS levels and A levels that are expected in some of the um, faculties is hectic. And I feel that, that, that personally, and I've been in teaching forever, that that would actually be the better option to do the IAB. Um, with holidays starting on Monday, will teachers be available? Our teachers work full time. Um, we're the one environment where we don't have teachers going off on holidays, so most definitely our teachers are available. It's just always very important to remember that sometimes there are expectations that teachers will be able to answer and reteach um, in one-on-one -on -one situations. Due to numbers, it unfortunately isn't possible. They will facilitate with help and directions of where to go to find extra help, but unfortunately they can't always um, reteach a whole section or explain. Um, one of our teachers has in one grade, for example, 147 students. Um, and she's one of those who gets a lot of questions. Can you just imagine trying to answer 147 different ones? But yes, we are available and we will help you in the right direction, most definitely. Um, my son does appear if fell in grade nine. Would the move to Afrikaans fell be a problem in terms of enrollment? In terms of enrollment, no. However, it's quite a hectic change to move over to Afrikaans. Um, offering Sepedi is really difficult in a school, in an IB environment, um, for the simple reason that finding teachers who remain in an environment like ours um, is quite difficult because teaching online is, is a lot of work. It's a lot of additional work. Um, it's amazing but it's very difficult to find people. So the Sepedi part, um, Liesl, I think will answer a little bit as well about the options that there are in terms of where you've moved from, et cetera, that there are at times places where that could actually um, be handled. Uh, Clinton, I guess, not sure how many hours per day the kind of work will be in terms of grade. I don't know if I can go for you all the time to tell you more what is expected in the last school and the worst school. Um, ek denk ek in terme van klasse is dit belangrik en ek gaan vir Liesel vraag wanneer sy net nou beskikbaar is om gauw vir ons sy rooster te wees, dat ek julle net gauw gauw een deel daarvoor kan wees. Dan sal ek terugkom sien toe Elna was wat gebeur dan as jou dochter in graad 11 is en een hele jaarse werk met opvang as hy nou een vak soos dans het, wat sy nie dan by ons kan neem nie. Um, Elna, as sy van een IB omgeving afkom, kan sy bijvoorbeeld nog steeds dans by haar huidige school neem en dit dan dat ons saam met hulle werk vir graad 12. Um, as dit nie van een IB omgeving af nie, dan is dit nie moendlik nie, want mys mag net by een examenraad registreer vir jou graad 12 jaar. Ek sal graag daai, miskien dat ek en Liesel in een sessie saam met jou sit en die opties vir haar vakkeuses met jou bespreek. Daar is definitief vakke waar dit moendlik is en waar dit al definitief met baie sukses toegepas is. Maar die vakkeuse is baie, baie belangrik wanneer ons dit dan bespreek. Um, goed, kom ons kyk, ga gau Liesel has put up an example of the high school um, timetable. So if I'm, for example, in grade 8, we have to remember that in grade eight and nine, and I've picked up this isn't um, always clear to parents, in grade eight and nine, there are not as many subjects as we think they are. There's actually a subject called natural sciences, which has in it um, the biology component or life sciences component, and then the physical sciences or the sciences we used to call it component. So if I look at this timetable, you will see that on a Friday, for example, at 12 o'clock, there's a physical sciences class. So that would be a physics 
classroom or lesson. Then you will also see that, for example, at nine o'clock on a Tuesday, there is a Fisisa Wetenskappe class. So that tells me that this is split language wise. And it also tells me that my child doesn't attend both. My child will then be attending the Fisisa Wetenskappe class. So my child won't have class at 12 o'clock on a Friday if I have an Afrikaans speaking child. On the other hand, let's go and look, for example, at a typical child who has geography um, on a Monday would have class, then have life orientation, then have their first additional language, either the Afrikaans or English, then their maths or Viscana, depending on which one they had. The same with life orientation would be either on a Monday at nine o'clock or on a Wednesday at nine o'clock. So by looking at this, you can get a bit of an idea of how they will actually pick out their classes to build their own timetable. Liesl, is it perhaps possible just to show us a senior school one? Because I know the grade 11 parents, there seem to be a few. And um, I think that's one of the concerns perhaps that they have. So in the meantime, we'll continue with the questions until we have one like that. Um, the important thing to remember is in a school, kids would be in school for five hours. And on top of the five hours, they would have homework and studying for tests. We cannot expect that a high school student is going to spend less than approximately five hours working, but because it is more targeted, and depending on the child's skill, they sometimes get away with less. Depending on the child's skill, they might need more. But the nice part about this is in those open sessions, when my child, for example, doesn't do Lebensorientierung or Wiskunde or Technologie, that time is when my child would be doing exercises, practicing, um, watching some of the videos, etc., etc. So I can use the time for that which for me is important. Um, Liesl, if you can get up a grade 11 um, timetable or perhaps a 12, doesn't matter which one, 11 is fine. Okay, I'll just need to log out and log back in again because I'm logged in as a student, so it's going to take some. Time, time, fine. 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 Fine one learner maybe or mom has three learners a grade one a grade four and a grade seven learner so you might be um uh, working um for two hours in the morning have a longer break or only a half an hour break my i think the bottom line is that the learner one learner doesn't have to be busy for six or seven hours per day because it's one-on-one -on -one, um attention and some you get the learners who's finished within three hours um, somebody else needs a little bit more there might be learners who may even need less so it's all according to what you your learner your child um, is able to do and um, in maybe in subjects that you need more attention on you can give more attention to maths. And if Afrikaans and English are fine, you just skip through that. So yeah, it depends on learner, from learner to learner. However, no need to work for seven hours a day. And that um, there's no homework because you include that um, in your home, in your classwork during the day. So yeah, I think it's much less time than in a, a normal school. Uh, while I'm busy, maybe I can also just touch on a few um, questions that there were. For grade three, would we be able to continue with only cycle three and four and be ready for the November assessments? Um, that's a definite yes, if the learner um, was previously in a school and did continue doing some things during a lockdown in term three, you will definitely be able to be ready for the um, yeah, in assessment in November. And then there was another one. I have one more question. How do the assessment work for grade one? I saw that we need invigilators. Now for grade one, two and three, the parent may be 
the invigilator. So we are not that strict on grade one, two, and three. So that's not a problem. And then there was another one. What date are the assessments for grade three done in November? We usually start in the, the first Monday in November and then they write for the following two weeks. And then the assessment must be um, submitted by the end of the third week. Okay, so you have a week to submit the assessments. And we are waiting to sign up for grade three curriculum and are wanting to know if we will be able to complete the grade three. Yeah, the same, you will definitely have time. Um, the grade one, two, and three work, uh, lesson material is also divided into three cycles. So cycle four is also um, for revision purposes. And then I think there was one other one. For the full package version, version oh, that's about the online classes. All the classes are recorded and then posted within one or two days. So if you can't attend the live class, it will be posted on Brain Online and you can um, view it at a convenient time. And then I think there was one other one. My daughter is in grade six and the school closed down. And that's all about that um, you wanted to cut, catch up term three lesson material. And that is um, very possible. We can even, if you enroll, you can just contact me and we can even exempt her of term three and then you can work during term three and term two and three lesson material to get her up to speed to write the NDA exam. So there's a lot of different ways um, in the primary school that we can assist. It's, it's I think, in a way a bit easier um, to help the primary school learners because it's not that high stakes. Okay. Thanks, Lisa. Okay, yeah, thank you. Okay, on the grade 11 uh, schedule that, that Liesl is showing you now, we have to remember that when we look at a grade 11, then they don't have these combined subjects. So um, life sciences and physical sciences is one subject in grade eight to nine um, called natural sciences. And then social sciences consists of history as well as geography. Um, that's one subject. So we keep having this combined thing in grade eight, as well as then with economic management and sciences, which is sort of known to us as the business type subject, combines with accounting and then strangely enough, is still called economic management sciences, although they're separate. Um, so it would be more business and then economic, um, sorry, and accounting. So in grades 10, 11 and 12, this is what a typical timetable looks like. And again, here one would have to then choose to see um, according to your child's subjects. So please note that, that these timetables end at about quarter to five for the simple reason that again, and it works similarly to what Kada explained, your child's not gonna be busy with this the whole time. So there will be classes which will be in the morning, some in the afternoon. So for example, I'm an English speaking student and I have chosen to take um, English home language, Afrikaans first additional, I'm taking life orientation, I'm taking mathematics, physical sciences, life sciences, and tourism. So um, on a Monday, I would have my first and second and third sessions absolutely free because I wouldn't have Wiskundige Geletterdheid, agricultural science or geography or accounting or dramatic arts. And then my first lesson on a Monday would actually be at 11 o'clock. Now, I wouldn't actually be sleeping until 11 o'clock, preferably, because I would be getting up, and that's also important for them to get into routine of continuing sort of school and school environment. So they would be up at 11 o'clock, they would attend their first lesson, but before then, it's time for study, time for working through past papers, time for watching perhaps the videos from last week's classes that they had missed. So um, then they would have maths, and then after that, um, Afrikaans Eerste Audition Neil. After that, they'd have a free session. Then they wouldn't have accounting. And here, they would have mathematics again. So there's a second one. Sometimes they'll fall on one day. Sometimes they'll fall on separate days. We don't easily have a double session. Kids at school always talk about the double class. 
um, a double session where they have two classes following on each other. Ours are about 45 minutes long. So it's awesome to have an hour and a half, but we feel very sorry for them. Although I immediately at the assessments department would always say, uh-huh, and they're going to write three hour exams. So they're going to run a comrades without ever having sat for three hours studying impossible. So one's got to build up and work up to these longer work sessions. And that's typically where something like the Monday morning is a perfect situation to do so. And then this student would finish at quarter to four in the afternoon. But now actually my son who's doing this hypothetically is a golfer. And fortunately the golf courses are all open. And the golfers, I heard that this weekend, I saw an article, there were actually 70,000 people who played golf this weekend after the golf courses were open. So let's say my son actually wants to go and play in the week and he wants to play golf every Monday afternoon at three o'clock, but now he can't because he's got maths. Well, he can because that lesson will be recorded and will be available within a maximum of two days for him to watch. Two days, you say? Well, do you remember that some of these teachers are actually teaching perhaps six hours on the day and therefore have to have six sets of these videos which have to be converted into the right format and then have to be uploaded. And they also need a break somewhere. So very seldom does it take that long, but it could take long. Obviously, if there's a test, then they really sort of work into the night and, and, and push to get them up very much sooner. So I think you get the idea about how to look at the timetable, how to understand when there are classes, where there are classes, and how one would then work through them. You'll notice, for example, at Visual Arts on a Tuesday afternoon, it says PAT. That's for the practical assessment tasks. So in that time, the teachers are actually working with them specifically about their practical work. How do I do drama, for example, practically? Well, that's where they do vocal exercises, breathing exercises. They perhaps do a presentation of how they did their, um, or how they're going to do their, um, their presentations, their, their, perhaps their own chosen choice, where it could be the music that they're going to be playing or singing, whatever they're going to take part in for visual arts. And then, uh, sorry, for, for the dramatic arts. And then for visual arts, it would be about the skills that they are showing and the skills that they need to show. And interaction between the teacher and me saying, look with my camera from my phone, this is what I've done. But the perspective looks weird to me. I can't get it right. And this is then where the teacher gives them that interaction. So yes, practical sessions actually do work here as well. I might just mention that physical science practicals, we don't do in a laboratory. We do them with, um, with simulations. And um, I think we at Brainline all smile when we read how all the schools are now suddenly um, hustling and bustling to figure out how to do all these simulations because we've been doing them like this for quite a long time. I think that answers all of that, Liesl. I don't think there is a is anything specific more I think that was unanswered? Any other questions that somebody would like to ask us? Okay, there's a question that just came in. Let's you just read through that one. Uh, okay, I'm I think that one, I'll, um, perhaps if she could, I'll just type the answer and she can just email that through to Rosie. Anybody who needs quotes, um, please email um, rcronier at brainline.com or finance at brainline.com. Any other questions? I saw Rosie also put up her um, email address, finance at brainline.com, so that she can then send them in the right direction. Over to you, Liesl. Okay. I think that is about it. Thanks to everyone who joined in. Thank you. I don't know if you still wanted to add anything. Okay. Guys, thanks for everyone. Have a fantastic afternoon further. Bye.